All right, so if we take the model that we just derived for our two-stage op-amp, and we'll redraw it real quickly, we have our model that consists just of a GM, a resistance, and a capacitance. We have our compensation capacitor, CC, and then another GM, another resistance, and another capacitance. And we take our output from this node. So we put our input in here. This is GM1 times VN. This is R1, C1. This is GM2 times V1. R2 and C2. So if we come to node 1 and node 2 and do a KCL, our KCL expression at node 1 might look as follows. We have V in divided by RS if we have an input impedance from whatever our voltage source is at the input. <laughs> Plus S times C1 times V1. Plus V1 minus V2 times SC. C. And that's equal to GM1 times V I. Sorry, this is big GM1 times V I. If we go to node 2, we have KCL at node 2 is equal to GM2, sorry, big GM2 times V1 plus V out divided by R2 plus SC2 times V out plus V out minus V1 times SCC is equal to zero. And if we solve these two equations simultaneously, we get the following expression. And of course, we note that this term goes to zero if Rs is equal to infinity. All right, we would get V out over VI with respect to S is equal to GM2 minus SCC times R1, R2 divided by 1 plus S times C2 plus CC times R2 plus C1 plus CC times R1 plus GM2 times R1 times R2 times CC plus S squared times R1 R2 times C1 C2 plus C1 plus C2 quantity times CC. So immediately we see with, that we have a second order denominator 
and a first order numerator. And so what that means is we have two poles. And our poles are left half plane poles. And we have one zero. And our zero is a right half plane zero. If we were to do some analysis, we could find that our two poles were omega p1 is equal to minus 1 over gm2 times r1 times r2 times cc. Omega p2 is equal to minus gm2 times cc divided by c1 c2 plus cc times c1 plus c2. Now we expect this c1 times c2 term to be small, so if we neglect it, we can write that omega p2 is approximately equal to minus gm2 divided by C1 plus C2. Okay. Now we can further say that our the output of our operational amplifier might be dominated by some load capacitance, so C2 would be equal to some C load, and we expect the load capacitance to be much bigger than any internal capacitance, so we could further simplify this and say that omega P2 is equal to GM2 divided by C load, whatever the, the load capacitance is. Now we also have a zero, omega Z1 is equal to GM2 divided by CC. And remember, this is a right half plane zero. Now, this zero comes from the fact that whenever we have a feed forward path, our Miller capacitor, we have a zero. And if you remember when we looked at Miller, uh, at the Miller effect in earlier lectures, Miller effect results in uh, a pole frequency, but it also provides a zero because it, we feed the signal forward to the output. Okay, so in the next set of slides, we are going to plot the frequency response with the right half plane zero.